Good evening, welcome to Butter Chat. Hey, look, it's me, Yaf. I'm back in the gaff here at the Northeast Supreme Premier Nightclub. No, it's not the Phoenix Nights. It is the Eston Normie Social Club. We're in the bowels of the Eston Normie Social Club, Phil. I've got the Teesside Ramblery with me as well. And we're going to chat a little bit about Borough. We've got loads of stuff. Super Duper producer Corny and the Rake of Rock have put us loads of gear together. In generally, when it's a, a obviously end of season time, there's not much to talk about. But we've it's horrible, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> we, we, is we've got a few little bits and bobs that, that we've got to talk about. A um, couple of things to, to start off with then. Let's get the fixtures and fittings out the way. Um, we've got a little competition going on on our Facebook page. It's only on the Facebook page, Paul, isn't it, at the minute? Don't get the minute so it's, yet. it's only on the Facebook page. So we've kept it off the TikTok. Uh, we've kept it off the old Twittery things and all like that. Uh, and obviously, we're going to be uploading these videos up to our YouTube channel as well. Um, see how I said I was going to do that there. Not a clue. Not a clue. Not, not I, you know, I only just found out what uh, Twitter is. I thought some of the beds do. But anyway, we're gonna we're gonna put all that up on the old social media stuff as well. Um, but we've got our fixtures are out, so we're gonna look at the fixtures. First couple of fixtures, Phil, isn't it? Yeah. Was it Millwall at home? Millwall first game? at home. Not on the telly. Disaster. Disaster. Disaster for Sky. I mean, we were chatting a bit just before we came on there. I mean. Two teams, the Borough and Millwall, both fighting in the playoffs. La well, last season now. And they don't put us on the telly the first game of the season. It's bizarre, isn't it? Well, we don't make the decisions, but if we did, we'd exactly. have them all up. Every single one of them. So, look, Mill Millwall, I think that's a tough game, to be fair. Um, when, when I've looked through the, the opening fixtures, we've got a bit of a, a, bit of a hard start, really, mm -hmm. as the Borough. Uh, and not necessarily many players coming through the door, which I know we're going to go on to a little bit later on. But um, I'm sure, I hope, and I hope, I'm open and praying that there's some of them people who were at the Coventry game, last game that we played of the season, unfortunately got getting beat 1 0 by Coventry in the playoff second leg. I hope some of them come back, Phil, because yeah. it was a great night, great atmosphere. That my little lad was doing <clears> the old flag bearing and that, going around with his little team. Uh, I'll give him a big shout out now be United under 10s next year shameless. oranges shameless. yeah shameless plug for the kids they were fantastic they'd done all the uh, look they, they, they weren't they weren't worried about the uh, it's only it's only it's just our producer hasn't turned the phone wow. down <laughs> Did uh, think, literally before we came live we're all sat there saying volumes off volumes off you think it was amateur hour wouldn't you I'll tell you what there's plenty of other down market <laughs> Chat shows you can go and do, you know, Courtney. Anyway, listen. <laughs> listen, I, I only wear these to look good. Yes. It's co it, my eyes are as young as 22, but I, it's cosmetic. Cosmetic. Tough start. Not on the telly. Three o'clock kickoff. Key games for me, though. I've just been ch chatting to the club secretary. We know Kev. Big Kev, the club secretary, helps us out here at the Essen Army. Massive Leeds fan. Sort of stuck his, <laughs> stuck his head in at the broom cupboard. Uh, and seeing the shares, just went, yeah, it looks good, didn't he? So, uh, I don't think he's... But Leeds away, 2nd of December. I could have started our Christmas period off well, didn't it, that? Yeah, to be fair, we've had a... This last couple of seasons, we've had a decent Christmas running. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it'd be nice to to go to Leeds, call Delland Road on a on a uh, the 2nd of December and I mean, I, hopefully I, come away with points. I mean, I always remember as a kid, me. I mean, go, going to Leeds, it was always a massive thing. I mean, it... As much as it pains me to say it, they are a massive club. You know, they've got massive support. Mm. Uh, they're a massive club. The stadium, uh, you know, Ellen Road, even now as an adult, I mean, when I used to go there as a kid, I used to look around and think, wow, it's like Wembley. I'm like looking at it thinking, this is massive compared to Wesson Park. And then, obviously, I go there now as an adult, and I think, it's still got something about it, you know. It's still got something about it. And anyway, the Brian Clough thing and the damn game, anyway... There's loads of proper old school stadium. It's, it's just it's just a fantastic place to go. Tight like terraces. It's a fantastic place to go and win. Kev will kick that down in a minute. They are only next door. They are only next door. Meeting. We've got a committee meeting next door, so so we don't want to be sort of upsetting Kev too much. He'll kick the door in. Um, Rotherham away on Boxing Day, so another Yorkshire derby, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As well, so I, I think our hopefully, and I'm looking at the regular rock as well. The Christmas period, Paul, could be good for us, couldn't it? Could be, but. We're not at home on Boxing Day, what's going on? I know, I know that's a weird one. I, we've got that in brackets there, not at home, get in touch with the club. 
It's only <laughs> Wagram, it's only it's only what, is it two hours away? That is, that is it. An hour and a half, two hours. Teesside travel, I'll have a coach on anyway. Oh, I'm telling you now. And I'll tell you what, we're on, talking shameless. about shameless plugs <laughs> now, are we? Yeah, but we can on this show. I, I'm there, plugging the little kids' team, and you quickly got it. In fact, where's that shade come from? <laughs> anyway, hey, one of our premier sponsors, by the way, Teesside travel. Another two sponsors to be named in the next two weeks. I tell you what, we keep in suspenders here, don't we? Um, Watford. Last game of the regular season. Now, I don't know whether... I, I'm open that the Borough are thinking, last game of the season for us. We're done and dusted. It's all squared away. You know, we're in a position where we want it to be. Watford doesn't matter. We'll go down there. We'll field a couple, fl- field a couple of kids, you know. And they'll be on their ninth manager of the season at that point. <sighs> so I, I'm, I'm not worried about them at all. They will not sit on the fence there, Phil. I'm not worried. Ninth manager... Karanka will be there at some point. <laughs> he's just left Tel Aviv. We've got our Karanka scarf. I know he's left Tel Aviv, and who's took over? Robbie Bloody Keane. Robbie Keane! I tell you what, there's a butter contingent over there in Tel Aviv. And by the way, tune into Man and Phil's new show, Tel Aviv TV. <laughs> we'll be on that next year. Um, We're just trying to get fluent in the language, aren't yeah. we? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I mean, you've missed you've missed two out there, mate. I have, I have. I'm just coming back to them, but go on. Sunderland! Who? Oh, exactly! <laughs> Don't talk to me about Sunderland. Season ticket all didn't even get a ticket last year, but I'm not going down the, down there because we're trying to be friends with the club. I'm trying to be friends but with the club. But you did go all the way there and sit on the coach. I went you? all the way there on that Teesside Travel. Um, Teesside Travel made me sit on the coach. And, anyway. But at least it's only 40 minutes. Yeah, yeah. And do you know what? It was great. I see loads of drunken people and they're wearing in bully shirts for once. <laughs> um... Yeah, and, and obviously there's the Calibre Cup game, what we need to talk about. Obviously, Warnock staying on at Uddersfield yeah. uh, for another 12 months. Sharon doesn't want him at all. No. So, <laughs> look, I knew, we knew he was going to do it. You know, I don't know whether anyone's seen it. Um, and it was a, it's actually a, about the last 30 seconds of an interview Warnock done last season when he said, have, have you had any regrets in football? And he said, not taking Middlesbrough to the Premier League. Now, bear in mind, he was only with us for really a relatively short period of time. Not taking Borough to the Premier year, League because he thought that year he had a chance to get us into the playoffs and beyond. Now I know, obviously, Carrick, uh, Mr. Wilder came. I remember we were uh, we were actually away at another West, weird it was game. West Brom. We were it was West, West Brom, Brom away, yeah. where we seen them. Obviously, scenes where he came over. We were all sort of scratching our heads. What's going were, on? We knew be, before the game that the games that we'd been to at that point in the season, the atmosphere before the game was was unreal, wasn't it? Um, but that game, we we all stood. We were talking. Something's there's, yeah. there's atmospheric. It was a somber day, wasn't it? It was yeah. a somber day, and then obviously that happened at the end with the players giving you know hailing him and, and things like that, and then obviously the announcement of Chris Wilder, which by the literally by the time we got on the coach, which coach was that? It was a T-side travel. Oh coach. my god! Another um, shameless. <laughs> I'll line him up. You keep knocking him down, pal. Hey, there was a BBC Two in a pre-prepared statement, weren't they, saying that he's leaving the club? And I, I just think, and obviously look. I don't like to mention the S word, Strachan. Sorry. Teesside travel. <laughs> <laughs> but I put Wilder down in the same bracket. And look, there'll be people out there going, no, he, no you know, right. he didn't do the. I put Wilder down in the same bracket as Strachan, Monk, Wilder. Three people for whatever reason. And I don't think it was for the want of not trying with Strachan. I just don't think you could get it to gel. With Monk, I have my own opinions on it, and if I, if he aired him on here, probably find Borough chat in court. All yeah, right, we'd have, we'd have a Borough chat v two yeah. launch next week. Um, <laughs> and then Chris Wilder, I just think he down tools, didn't he? I think Sam and Jordan's absolutely right on Talksport. I think he's got uh, Chris Wilder's number. You know, I think Chris Wilder got a better offer, and he he smelt better offer somewhere else, and he down tools. And mm. the be- best way to get the sack is for your team not to win. And look where we were, fourth, fifth from bottom. Uh, when Carrick took over, and we all know what he'd done. But anyway, there's a little bit of trip down memory lane anyway. Middlesbrough of football. He said something today, Phil, didn't he? He certainly did. Uh, he, he seems to think that the uh, Middlesbrough transfer silence shouldn't be taken as a lack of activity. And do you know what? For the, for the last couple of seasons, I've been really vocal on various platforms um, that we don't do enough, and this this person that is at the club in that sort of capacity but bear in mind that contract you've signed there you're now only vocal on our platform <laughs> but a chat aren't you 
Certainly am. <laughs> um, but he, he brought, you know, he he is behind the likes of, of Giles coming last season and Archer um, and, and Ramsey um, and, you know, Tommy Smith, for example. We're starting to see what this guy can do behind the scenes. It's taken two years for mm. it to happen. But looking at the... Because we, we, we took a massive leap in quality... Um, from the the Chris Wilder squad to the Michael Carrick squad, and he's not come in with all of that up here because he's new to management himself. Yeah. He he's come in and he's relied on is it is it Kieran Scott to have that knowledge and that information available and and thinking he you know we can go for these and he has and that was lovely to see that we're actually we are challenging. Um, yeah, and I'm and I am really excited about who could possibly be walking through the door in the next two or three weeks. I mean, I must admit, uh, you've, you've mentioned his name there, Kieran Scott, and that, you know, people who watched me on other platforms two years ago, I wasn't a very, I'm not a big lover of director of football. Premier League, you get away with it. You know, Premier League, you're looking at multi-million pound players. Uh, you need directors of football to sort of bring them in, offer them what they want and give them their package deals. In the Championship and below, I, I always used to think to myself, does the butter really need a director of football? Why isn't the manager coming in and saying, I want him, him, and him? You know, that's the modern day football now, though. Yeah, yeah. But I think you hit the nail on the head, Phil, because Carrick has shown for me, bear in mind, I don't, we don't know whether Carrick knew Kieran Scott prior to him coming to the borough or whether he knows him. I'm sure they all know each other on the circuit, I presume. But to come in and work with him and work so close and bring certainly the loan signings that he brought in, mm-hmm. he must have had some input in some of them loan signings. Yeah. Uh, your Cameron Arches, your Ramseys, your Giles, uh, and people like that. You know, f- to bring them in, I know, was Giles a Wilder signer? Was, it, was Giles a Wilder Yeah, G- Giles came in at the start of the season. Did, did, did he come came in? Came under Wilder. Yeah. So, so but to, to have them have an input like he, he did, I mean, I, I always thought Warnock and Wilder sort of felt threatened by their director of football with Kieran Scott. Yeah, yeah. Where I think Carrick's embraced it because, dare I say it, he's a modern day manager. Yeah. You know that, that with with Wilder and, and certainly Warnock in the game for 30, 40 years. For, for that 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 period of time before we came to Borough, Warnock's not worked with directors of football because, like I said, they're a new thing in the game, um, and he's probably just been used to in the past to saying, "You're out because you're not good enough." You're out because yeah. where now he's saying, "You're, you're oh, I can't say that because I need to go and speak to this guy and tell him he's not good enough yeah. for him to decide what's going to happen." That's how clubs are run nowadays. Yeah. Well, Sorry for jumping in, where Carrick has been at Man United, where a director of football has been in for three, four years. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so he yeah. Knows exactly Premier League there. side, Paul. Yeah. Uh, like I say, I, mean, I, look, look at the I, first. Un- I understood it with a Premier League setup, yeah. and Carrick, obviously, let's, let, you know, let, let's be honest about it. Carrick has got aspirations to, to manage at the highest mm-hmm. level, you know, and, and, and hopefully he helps us along the way, mm-hmm. you know. But, um, you know, these directors of footballs. They're, they're not always a good thing. Look, be, before we had Kieran Scott, we had, was it Victor Orta? Victor Orta, Victor Orta yeah. That was disastrous for the club and it's ended in disaster at, at Leeds as well because he's, he's gone from Leeds as well. Yeah, now, so. yeah. Um, no, I was going to say something there. It was on the top of my, top of my head and I thought, I, I must say that, but no, that's gone. It will come back. But what you can do is you can you can get involved on Borough Chat, can you? So you can drop us a message uh, saves us just rambling along. All right, I have got the Teesside Rambler here. That's why he's here. He's paid to be the Teesside Rambler. But you can get involved. Who's getting paid? Oh, didn't you get your paycheck? Must be me. Right, so basically, Paul got his. Paul got his and Courtney got his. Wow. I so, get paid in drinks at the Aston you got, you, you got a you got a Diet Coke, haven't you? Anyway, listen. Yeah. Um, pack, pack of Space Raiders. Yes. <laughs> That'll go down on expenses sorry, then, Space Raiders. Sorry. Right, <laughs> so <laughs> you've got... We, we're going to chat about some rumours, but you you get involved as well, all, all right? That, that's what we do it for. It's to get you involved, active. Now, I would like to tell you that I'm really technical and I'm probably going to touch my phone. It's probably going to make a noise, but I can see that we've got a few people on. I think the man in the middle has been on, Annie. He certainly has. Mr. Colin Watt. <laughs> I just think what are you going on about? <laughs> it certainly has. Um, <clears throat> so, Jason Stewart, Anthony, Colin Ward, Susan Thatcher, Chris Gowland, Nathan Rose, Kirsty Lee, Johnny Jones, Ian Galloway, Sam Corcoran, Callum Whitfield, uh, David Andrew, Sean Banks, thanks for, for jumping in and watching. Uh, Ian Galloway says, great show, lads. Chris Gowland says, yes, Phil Bullock. 
Yes, come on, Chris Gowland. Must uh, be a family member, is it? It's not it. I used to work with him. He's a good lad. We've so. wheeled him out. We've wheeled him out. We, we'll keep him in a broom cupboard over there. Tell Scott. Go on. Keep going. Wow. <laughs> you want the to come on <laughs> Colin Ward says, use the full name, lads. Dirty Leads. Oh. Earlier on, Dirty Leads. Cole, when you come in here, mate, and do the man in the middle, don't upset the secretary. Right? He's a Leeds fan. We're trying to stay on his side. We just... When he comes in here, we put the lead shirts up, and then now we're just cleaning Phil's boots with them. Back, back, back in the bin. Yeah. Uh, Colin's been back on. He says, our transfer, uh, our transfer are likened to going to Tesco at 10pm for the reduced items. We're usually the last ones to get the players in. Yeah. You, you, we are like... Uh, it, but I would like to think with that statement, what's come out today... Yeah. It's basically telling us, isn't it, you know, when you read between the lines, that there is a lot of work going on. Just because it hasn't, we aren't putting it out there into the press. But I did say, you know, because you may not believe this, sat that side of the camera, but, but we do have a, like a sort of production meeting before we come into here. I know, I know what you're thinking. This lad's telling lies, but we do. We, we, we're here for half five. We, we do. don't go on air till seven o'clock. We do. We do. Um, you're here for half five. I don't come in like a six. What am I missing? But that's in your contract. <laughs> 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 so we we were chatting about it in there and. I think the whole, even the Premier League, the, the transfer window at the minute is up and down at the minute. I mean, you've got Arsenal going after Declan Rice. We know he's going to Arsenal. Every every Arsenal fan, every football fan all over the land knows that he's going to Arsenal. He's not going to Man City. They haven't even put a written offer in for him. They're just using them as leverage for more money. Just go and sign him. Just spend the money and sign him. And I, Mount is getting being talked about. For, just sign him. And, and I think at the minute, it's having that trickle effect down to the mm. championship because the championship, no, no, no one wants to budge. Nobody wants to move. Yeah. Nobody yeah. wants to move quickly while the Premier League are acting the way it is at the minute because you never know who's around the corner and you, you sign someone you think, oh, he could become available because he's signed in. And that's what they're doing. They're all just waiting back. But you are right. We normally the borough are. We are last to sign. Yeah, but do you not think it's weird? Normally we're linked with everyone and this year we're linked with no one. Well, I think it's a, I'd like to think that's a character thing. I'd I like to think it's a good thing. Michelle Vesper's watching. Good evening, Michelle. <laughs> There's a blast. It's been a long time since you've heard that. There's a blast from the past, uh, Michelle. Just on a different channel. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Ibrahim Tanner's also watching. Ibrahim, it's it's absolute honour to have you watching us. Uh, brilliant lad. And thank you for following us all the way to Borough Chat as well. Oh, dear brown um, lad. Good lad. We put a lot of a, a lot of effort into seeing players walk away. We, we really bloody do. Um, and then Nathan Rose says, Leeds away is going to be the highlight of my season. Get your finger over that dump button. He's just said bloody there. Hopefully get a win. Quack. Yeah. Quack. Quack, quack. So look, we, we can go on to rumours now before we start talking about the local football. We can go on to rumours. The Everton lad in there, what's his name? Let me get his name. Ellis Sims. They're the names I like. Not like the two lads you gave me last week. Well, uh, the the Man do. City guy and the Leighton Orient lad. The fact that I've can't the fact that I've said that the Man City guy and the Leighton Orient guy is the means I couldn't speak speak the name. But yeah, Ellis Sims. Everyone's been linked with him on the film. Yeah, and, and I tell you what, the Sunderland fans were really happy with him last season. Um, Didn't score many goals though. Did no, he? but he had a couple of injury. I mean, he played really well. I think he played. Did he play against us at home? Um, I mean, McGree was too good for him, uh, getting that little pass to keeper. Um, okay. But they, they were really happy with him. They, they thought that they could possibly keep him and buy him in the, in the summer, but that doesn't look like it's going to happen. So um, I'm not going to I'm not going to be one of these fans that goes, he's played for Sunderland, I don't want him at my club. No, Sunderland, no. Sunderland were good last season. Um, th- where they finished in the league tells well, us all we need to know. But if Let, he, let's, let's be honest, a part of it's because they've got a good manager. Players. You know, yes, certainly. it's because I've got a good manager. Um, Ryan Giles, now I'm sick of reading about him. I won't, I won't lie to you, I'm sick of reading about him on social media, Ryan Giles. Um, I don't think I've... Uh, obviously, we get loads of stuff. People send us messages through the week and, and things like that. And thank you for all the messages and uh, messages and what they call... What, what they call direct... What they're comments. Comments, comments, whatever they are, yeah. And people send us messages privately. I think there's no... I don't think I've met a... <laughs> We're laughing at. I was just gonna go evening, Michelle. <laughs> no, don't. Come on, don't be that. Don't be that. Don't, you don't want to turn off, do you? <laughs> evening, Michelle. No, listen. So, I don't think I've met a Borough fan who doesn't want Ryan Giles back. To be fair, mm. however, 
I did read something today about Leicester City sniffing around uh, the availability of Ryan Giles. So if the Borough are going to do anything, I'm probably thinking it's got, going to have to be a buy. You know, we're probably going to have to buy him because to loan him back is probably out of the equation with Leicester City parachute payments. That's that's that, 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 and that's what I was just about to say. Um, we're in a different league to the likes of Leicester because we're working under budgets that we've worked under for the last couple of years so that we're within that financial fair play and whatnot. The the benefit of clubs being relegated is that these parachute payments are added onto their accounts, which ultimately gives them extra money should they wish to use it yeah. for transfers. The types of, Leicester will price us out of a Ryan Giles move if they really want to buy him. Um, and we aren't going to be able to compete with that. So we either need to try and sign him now yeah, or draw a line and move on. I'd like to think that, obviously, Ryan Giles, if he had the ch- chance of two clubs, he'd want to come back to the Borough. I'd like to think that. But money talks in football, unfortunately, for, you know... There's, there's not a lot of loyalty in football anymore. Um, and there's the um, the goalkeeper. Now, we were chatting him in just before we came on air. Now, I watched that game. For those who who have seen any highlights of the England under-21s, European Championship League cars, he's under-21s. Obviously, we've got Cameron Archer's out there. Aaron Ramsey's out there as well. The goalkeeper, uh, James Trafford. What a save he made yesterday, by the way, that was right. It was very Gordon Banks-esque for those fans out there who remember Gordon Banks. But Never heard of him. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, when you get to 28 years old like me, you know a few old players. But, I mean, obviously Gal will know him because, you know, Gal, I think Gal played in the same team as him. But anyway, very Gordon Banks-esque save down his right-hand side and is attracting a lot of attention. Uh Borough in there. I know Burnley were, were, were mentioned as well. And Sheffield Wednesday also mentioned. Now, he was on loan last year, wasn't he? Mm. Um, and loads applauded. It's, do you think we're going to look for another goalkeeper? Bear in mind, we brought Saul Brin back. We've got... Uh, Zach Hemmings. Zach Hemmings. Signed, uh, an extension. An extension. Uh, we've got a young goalkeeper in Henry Popple who has just signed a, a pro <clears throat> deal from the academy. Two and a half year, which obviously I would probably surmise he's going to go out on loan. Yeah, um, Roberts. yeah, we've got Roberts, and and then obviously we have got a place there for a number. What I would say a number one. I mean, if I was that Roberts, I'd be knocking Carrick's door down because the four games I think I watched him, Paul. I, I think he was, a, I think he was excellent. You know, he's never put a foot wrong in the games he, he stood he up. He came to us. It was at Northampton Town. He came to us from. And he was he was Fair their the player of the season. Kept the most clean sheets. You know, it's it's it's. It, it, it's a similar scenario for him to what Dan Barless has suffered since he's I mean, joined the club with his lack of appearances. I mean, if you're going to sign someone like James Trafford, who who is a young lad, but that Roberts for me will be saying, "Well, I mean, I've got more experience than him. I've been at not. I was there. I was there. Yeah, there's no the way. I mean, if if we do sign, I think I would be bitterly disappointed as a fan to see a 20 year old kid come in as a goalkeeper and go straight into the. Between the sticks, I think Roberts, having been here for a season now, he's he's made a couple of appearances. Did did nothing wrong in them appearances. Yeah. Um, absolutely, with more experience. I mean, and I have, I have obviously, I, because I'm boring. I read a lot of Borough uh, chat rooms and, and things like that. And there the is a little question mark over Salt Brin as well. I mean, I love Salt Brin. I've watched him play since he was a kid. I watched him when he was a, he was at Martin playing. He's a decent outfield player as well as a goalkeeper. Um, there was a sort of a, a chat on there about that that maybe Carrick didn't fancy Solbrin because of his footwork, which I don't. Basically, watching from a kid, I I don't see that because I, I think he's a decent player. So, and I know obviously every goalkeeper's now got to play like a sweep, a keeper, if you like. Haven't they? The gone of the days have just been a shot stopper. You now got to be able to play a little bit of football. So. I have read saying that Solbrin sort of doesn't cut the mustard with Carrick, but I can't see that. I can't see that. Mm-hmm. So look, I mean, Solbrin will be probably be looking to, to be on that bench week in week out and try and push himself. So what you're trying to say is playing up front extra. Yeah, yeah. Breaking news. Sweep, sweep the keeper strike. Breaking news, super duper live here on Butter Chat. Uh, anyway, Mark, I've got I've got two questions before we move on. Uh, Go on, Naomi Burke. Who? Any relation, Paul? Evening, uh, Naomi. Has been. I said. Question is though: Do Leicester want Ryan Giles as much as Borough do, and where would the player want to go? And I think, I don't think it's a case of 
to Borough want him? Because if Borough want him more, we're going to end up getting silly with money and offer way more than what I don't we need. To I don't think we've got that much hype money. You know, so I think I think if, if Leicester are serious, I think we just need to move on and say we're, she, we're not. She's right though. Where, where does where does he want to go? I mean, don't say that too much, Mark. Well, <laughs> she's right. Don't say that too much. <laughs> well, I agree with that. <laughs> I, I I agree with the fact that I think Giles enjoyed his time up here I think I think you only had to see that in the, at the Coventry game he was very teary eyed he, he done a massive thing to the fans saying I've loved it here um, look I, I haven't always been a massive fan of Giles look if, if he could defend as if he could defend as good as he could going forward look he wouldn't be in the championship he'd be in the Premier League week in week out but you know he, he is a modern day wing back now I suppose you know he's a modern day he's assistant in the box speak for the self so uh, Naomi is right you know how serious are the Borough in bringing him back? Or how serious are we on any other potential people for that position? Or is it down to the player? If it was down to the player, I would like to think he'd pick Borough all day long. A little bit, yeah. I sort, sort of agree, but you know the, the comment there, where would the player want to go? As a footballer, that player's going to want to go to the team that can A, give him the most money, and B, give him the best chance of playing in the Premier League. Leicester have just come down. The expectation is come the end of this season, mm. Leicester are bouncing straight back up. Yeah. Giles isn't sat there going, oh, Borough or Leicester, he's going... Premier League. Premier League. Championship, yeah. yeah. Uh, Let's have a, a quick see, see what I'll have a little read on these because I, I don't need these glasses. But anyway... Um, Let's have a look. Nathan Rose, Nathan Rose has been on. Rosie Lab, good evening, mate. Leeds away is going to be his highlight of his season, taking the young and uh, hopefully he'll get a win. Have I already read that? <laughs> I've already been. Have you? Scroll down at the bottom. Stewie Briscoe's watching, though. Big Stewie, big England fan, just Scroll come back from Malta. Right at the bottom. Uh, there. That's, there's your comment. Piero, I was going to bring on. Ibram, Ibram Tanner's come on about Piero. I've seen a little thing about Piero yeah. today, um, saying that he didn't even know he had to come back to the borough. Did you see that? No, I didn't see it. Oh, Basically, his agent <laughs> informed him, said, really, you need to get back for pre-season training. Well, what do you mean? Well, they don't finish for another two weeks. Their, their league finishes in two weeks' time. Um, now, he's... There's no way he's going to finish playing for is it Boca Juniors. Yeah. There's no way he's going to finish playing for Boca. Come here for a week that involves a week away in Portugal and then come back ready for the start of the season. Having had two weeks where he's... If he does come back and play for the Borough, it's not going to be for a number of weeks into the season. I think if he was dictated, before, he's a, if he comes back, he has to have like four weeks off. Yeah. So you won't see You're not going to see him until after the first international break. Yeah, yeah. You won't see him until October. But what else is wrong? I know, I see... Alan Tash Fletcher, Tash, good evening, mate. He, he's watching, and Lewis Capaldi's watching, isn't it? Is that? Oh no, sorry, Lewis Clark. These glasses have to sort these out. The Clares aren't they? Yeah, not yet. Beard. <laughs> anyway, what's that Maria's put? Where? Are you son, have you seen my glasses? Yeah. I, <laughs> stop drinking all the coke. <laughs> um, have you paid for that? Other, other news: season tickets back on sale. I've seen that as well. Season tickets. Back yeah. On. How many have we sold? I don't, I Over nineteen thousand. Where did you get that from? Have you just plucked out the air? No, have you, you don't have that? a statistician that just... Don't bring me in and say you The stat was kicking off here. After, after an hour, a bus. If he says 19,000, it's 19,001, lad. So there, you've, you've heard it from the stat over there, the director rock. He reckons over 19,000. So you know, season tickets are going well there, to, to be fair. Bear in mind, we're still quite away from the I remember the, the days under Strachan, mate, where we sold 12,000, but only 5,000 turned up. Um, I just apologise to a lot of fans there. We've mentioned that name twice now on the same show. It won't happen again. Well, I'll um, tell you what we haven't done for five minutes. Evening, Michelle. No. No. Oh, just, just be here to us, man. Shaking hell. <laughs> anyway, listen. Um, we're shameless. We are very shameless. And do you no, know it's what? Not, it's not that we're care. shameless. It's because we can. Yeah. Um, and tickets for the friendlies, Bradford. Uh... Go on then, say that yeah, French well, team. Well, there's Oxair. Oh, oh. Oxair. Oxair. Um, there's, there's been a couple of issues, hasn't there, with the ticketing platform play, uh, players. Fans not being able to buy tickets. Yeah, I've seen some of those people whinging. Yeah, in uproar, they can't get tickets for Bradford, of, of all of all games to go and see. Um, and York. But, you know, yeah, Bradford, Bradford Hartlepool, York, yeah. Oxair. Um, you don't try and say it. Go on. Yeah, yeah, the French team. The, um, <laughs> for... <laughs> I mentioned it earlier on, but Cameron Archer, I uh, just want to quickly go on because I want to just quickly chat about a bit of local football before we go. Um, Cameron Archer, did he come on again against Israel? I watched the majority of that game and he was on the bench. I know he came on and set the goal up in the first game. 
So he's getting a lot. Of t- he's getting a bit of game time, Cameron Archer, uh, for the Eng- England under twenty ones in the European Championships under Lee Carsley. Uh, they need an out and out striker. Them put the coach's head on if they had an out and out striker like Harry Kane. They'd be a well beaten. Anyway, new kit. When's a new kit coming out, Paul? Next week. There we go. You've heard it from the stat. Oh, he doesn't get things wrong. Next week, the Borough home. I think it'll be the home kit first. Yeah, it won't be the away. That'll be a couple of weeks yet, won't it? Typically. The, the, the home kit will be, will be so out. No. But, what do you mean you're just guessing? What we did see, and I put we put a picture up on the Facebook page if you didn't see it, we seen Woodgate and Carrick in the new training gear. Uh, am I right in saying turquoise? Turquoise? It's blue and it's, turquoise. It's Oxair, that French team, mate. What was that? Who? Oxair. It's Oxair. definitely not Oxair. It was turquoise, I'm telling you now. So, turquoise kids. Um, what do you think about the new kit, band or no band? So, so funny enough, I've, I've, a couple of people have shot this down. I have seen a picture on the uh, some of the forums, right, where, um, and, and I won't ruin it for people, but people say that there's a strip leak um, of what the home strip's going to look like. Um, and I've it, it has a blue trim. Yeah, I've seen On it. the home kit, it had a blue trim. Loads of people shout, shouting it down, saying, oh, yeah. but actually, now that the training kit has been released... It looks like it could be a goer, that picture. So if you can find that picture, anybody, share it again so we can have a, yeah, yeah. a good nose at it. But it does, what I've seen looks smart. Um, whether there's going to be a band or not. Yeah, I know, I know, I know Super Duke producer Courtney is not a massive fan of the band. Um, Obviously, we've got a couple around here, which is the band sort of came back. I, I always remember the band with Cameron's on, but that's because I'm old. Um, New kit we've just spoke about. The training kit. Michelle Bestford's come on there again. Evening, Michelle. Um, she's just come on and said about the, the training kit. Um, did we see the new training kits? Tops today. The red and blue one is lovely. Well, the players have the red and blue ones on. Did you see them? It has like... Yeah. The, the blue has like, like a sort of a design in it. it does it say Borough in it? So it, it says Borough all over in a, in a different colour to the darker blue. But the training gear for the coaches I thought was fantastic. Yeah. That was the turquoise. Turquoise. Dark blue for Carrick and Woody. Turquoise. Turquoise. So, it was definitely turquoise. <clears throat> um, hopefully, and Ab- Ibrahim Tan has been on and said about the band, Danny. Uh, I've just seen that when it came the in band there. Is, I, I, a band always a band. The band is iconic. Uh, Michelle's asking, do we have a different sponsor? We don't know yet. Because well, I, I have actually seen the, the thing that lead shirt. That lead shirt had a different sponsor on. Wasn't there just just let me digress ever so slightly here? Um, the end of the season, I read something online like. where weren't they banning betting companies on the front of? Sh- is that this? Obviously, no. Just it, Premier is it, League or? It's Premier League, is and it? it's for about two seasons' time. But right. they can still go on the arms. Well, that's fine. No so so the, there's talk. There's talk about obviously thirty-two red and things like that, or in Premier Premier League sides. And they've not been on there. They can still be on the shirt or on the back of the shirt under the number, but they can't be your main blazon. But that's not coming in for about another two seasons. Is that what it is? Because it's given current <coughs> deals time to run out, otherwise clubs would lose Wasn't money. Why we had to get rid of 888.com? Some are similar. I don't know. God knows. It's a good shirt, that Carling Cup. It was, it was a good shirt. Away, Carling Cup shirts. Oh, I'll tell you what. We didn't put the UEFA Cup final one on there, mate, because no. it didn't go where we wanted it to. Um, <clears throat> a couple of things we want to mention as well MSC Foundation Memory Walk for the Dementia which is on Sunday the 23rd of July look if you can support it if you can help it out uh, you know indirectly or directly if you can send a little bit of money or if you want to get involved with the walk you know please do you know we, we want to help the, the club as much as we can uh, and good luck to our very own Red Carrock our very own Red Carrock here Mr Paul Burke is taking part in the Ali Brownlee uh, five slash two k fun run whatever it is he's doing one of them and he's doing that uh, very very shortly mate when is it Friday is it Friday coming two k so there you go free so look big round of applause for uh, our own very own Rick the Rock doing things like that as well <coughs> very quickly before we go because we've chatted all things but really a couple of things about local football what I want to talk about one of them's a little bit sad and it saddened me a little bit um, I don't know whether you've seen it on social media. Uh, it popped up straight away on, on mine. Thornaby, Thornaby, Thornaby FC. I'm absolutely gutted for them. Mm. I'm absolutely gutted for them because they, they've had a fire. It, 
Well, they haven't had a fire. It, no. It, it's looking S- like ours. Somebody and, yeah. has had a fire yeah. at their expense. A very costly expense. Basically, from what I'm reading, it's looking like arson. Uh, whether it's kids or whether it's people maliciously do it, I don't know. You know, cut a long story short, they're now trying to raise money. Uh, I think yeah, when we just before we came on air, I think they've raised just over two thousand. Just just quid. under two thousand. Just under two thousand quid, and it only started, I think, today. Yeah. Um, they're, they're trying to raise money, obviously, to get themselves back up and running again. I mean, there's not enough money in grassroots football as it is, and for something like that to happen to a to a local team for me is devastating. So everyone from from Thornaby. FC, you know, you know, we're all thinking of you, and we hope and people will, will, will maybe chip in and 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 send a couple of quid uh, towards your your fund there. There is a there is a GoFundMe if you if you search uh, Thornaby FC on Facebook, they've posted a GoFundMe link. Um, just under two thousand already raised. They're looking to try and raise thirty five thousand. Thirty five grand. Um, <clears throat> the last one's a big one, mate. The last the last talking point. So my mum's been on saying who's won the regular t- tickets for the club. As you know, we were run- and I said right at the top of the show, we we're running a competition. We will uh, pick a- as soon as we go off air tonight. We will put all the names in a hat and we will pick one out and we'll- your name will be emblazoned all over the Facebook page as the winner. Uh, and then what we'll do is we will get in touch with you and we'll tell you where to pick your tickets up and you'll come here to the Northeast Premier. Social club with the Essen and Normby and watch the uh, the reggae band which is on on Friday coming. Unfortunately, I would not be to greet you. I may have my feet up in Portugal uh, on a recce mission looking for some borough players. Um, you've got two things. Go on. You want to talk about Isaiah Jones, don't you? How did you know? Massive. This. <clears throat> Listen to this. I don't know whether you've read this yet. Uh, so BBC T's. Um... They, they did uh, an interview with Zaya Jones uh, and he's come out and, and look, players have bad games, players go through patches where we as fans don't think that they're putting the shift in that we expect them to put in as a professional footballer. Um, and, and I, like many uh, fans, have had my say um, on the terrace um, about certain performances this this last season. Um, but it's it, it really hits home when you hear... Um, what he said and, I, and I'll read it um, he basically said I had a lot of off the team issues going on um, his missus was pregnant and seven members of his family died this season um, on top of that he's had mental health issues um, and he's he's been taking medication to try and uh, help him out of this frankly horrific patch um, that he's been going through so it's worth a mention, certainly worth a mention. Two things for that for us, uh, ladies and gents, for me. Uh, he may be a footballer, he may be on more money than we earn, and he, but he's a human being like everybody else, and he goes through exactly the same pain as everybody else, losing family members, stress, mental health issues. So our thoughts, uh, certainly all our support is going to Isaiah Jones, uh, to get himself back up and running on. We all know what he can do on a football field. We've seen it. All right. Um, I don't think there's any Borough fan out there wondering why he wasn't sort of even on the bench, let alone playing at some stage. We now know why, and he's been honest, vocal, and upfront about it again. And look, I can only, I can only speak from what I what I think, and it's about opinion, like it is about football. I don't care whether you're a man, woman. Black, white, gay, straight. If you have any type of mental health issues or problems, you need to speak to somebody, you need to pick up the phone up and you need to f- t- chat to someone and say, do you know what? I might need help. You know, and that's what, for me, makes you the bigger man. And I think Isaiah Jones here not, has only come out and... It must be hard for a football player to say that mm-hmm. I am taking medication <clears throat> for a mental health problem. Yeah. You know, he's a high-profile footballer. Um, so... If he can do it, I, I'm sure every man... And look, we all know somebody who has either sadly harmed or done something to herself or are going through a problem like that. We all know someone. I don't I don't care what anyone says. We all know someone and they just need to talk. So look, that's our serious bit towards the end because when I didn't know now about that till I actually came in here tonight and Phil told me that quote, what had come out on BBC T's. Um, I think it's I think it's a massive achievement for Isaiah Jones to come out and be honest about for, for, being, for being so young to be able to to say that it, you know it's 
it is inspiring because yeah. the people don't talk people don't talk enough um, and certainly young people yeah they think that they can you know the the um, they're walking around with Kevlar vests on they're untouchable they have all of these issues going on they'll just go out and drink and, and do things that they shouldn't be doing and, and eventually it catches up and, and Isaiah Jones could have done that and he hasn't the club will be supporting him massively um, but the confidence to sit there and say this is what's going on this is how I feel and this is how I'm dealing with it should be inspiring Borough fans the world over to do exactly the same thing and on that ladies and gents we're just about to go I just want to read a few more comments out and as we were talking there about mental health issues and, and Isaiah Jones there there was loads of thumbs up and loads of love hearts going up on our Facebook live stream page thank you very much for your support and, and look don't be sort of like don't think that footballers don't watch little streams like this because they all have social media like me and you on their downtime they all put their Facebook on they all put Instagram on they all put YouTube on so Isaiah Jones and the football club will see this so your support is much appreciated a um, couple of points before we go Daz Burkett is watching Daz good evening mate uh, Ibram's come on and said the band is iconic quarters it, it's, it's iconic it's iconic yeah well I'm not going to say that because he, he's jumped ship to us anyway uh, Daz has come back on lads. great show cheers Daz could see home kit looking like the 95 one with the blue trim mm -hmm. if the training kit is anything to go by I think that's what Phil was leading to what I also think that as well. I'm looking over at Paul there. I think that's what that could be there, Paul. But Paul's keeping tight lipped. Uh, I remember 77 when you couldn't have sponsors on the telly so they could buy the strip and without the advertising. Totally agree with you, Ibram, because the first ever Borough kit I got, uh, and it had nothing to do with alcohol or anything like that, but it was the white band strip, the Hummel one with the, with the V-neck, uh, and it had Cameron's ale on the front, but the kids' ones didn't, and that was nothing to do with... It was just that the kit was cheaper without the sponsor on. Do you know what I mean? For, for, for families to buy. And I always remember our mum buying me that. She got that when she got divorced, old dad. But anyway, uh, it was a little thing. Wow. Uh, good luck, Reg the Rock from Tower. Uh, Michelle said, I read all about it today. You just never know what someone is going through in their personal lives. Absolutely spot on, Michelle. Um, you know, our, our thoughts exactly. Uh, and Ibram's come back on loads of love to Isaiah Jones. The kid needs all our support. Absolutely do. And hey, look, on that bombshell from the Teesside Rambler and Yaf, thanks for joining us in the gaff again. We will be back next week. Next week. Uh, and I tell you what, we've got a fantastic guest next week. Caroline, Wa Caroline Walker. Caroline Walker is going to be with us live in the studio chatting all things Borough. Uh, look, Caroline Walker. Look, Caroline Walker. So she, she'll be on. I think if Caroline's coming in, we are going to need aircon. Yeah, we need some air to sit between us. We'll have to get some sandwiches for us. Ice packs strapped around your ankles. Um, <laughs> so look, straight after this, we'll grab a winner for the for the tickets to the gig here at the club. Hopefully, it will be you. Enjoy that. Uh, we've got some more. We'll have some more bits and bobs going on on the page as well. Different competitions, different giveaways uh, from the sponsors and things like that. But look, I'm Yaf and I'm off. This is the Teesside Rambler. We're off together. Join us next week on Borough Chat. And hopefully we'll have a couple of sounds to talk about. See ya. See ya.